Hey, thanks for checking out this video. Today we're going to be looking at equality comparisons with the .NET record type. And if you stay right to the end of this video, if you're stuck on older versions of .NET and you want to see how you can use the newer record type in the older versions of .NET, stay tuned, I'll show you how to do that. And one more thing towards the end of this video, I will show you an interesting comparison trick to work around with record types. So let's jump right over to Visual Studio and get started. All right, I'm here in Visual Studio and I have a project that's called Record Type Equality Demo. This will be up on GitHub in my Dev Leader repository. I'll link to that in the description so you can go check that out if you want to play around with this. But it should be simple enough that if you just want to follow along in Visual Studio, that'll work too. Okay, so the record type that we have accessible to us in C Sharp, uh, you can declare such as uh, record, my record, um, and then we have this constructor type that actually allows us to have positional properties. So we can say like int x, and I guess their property, so we'd give them a capital. Um, and the same thing technically on the naming here, right? We want capital. So this actually gives you a a type that would have a property X and a property Y on it. But what's the difference between something like that and something that just looks like what we're used to seeing, which might be like my class. And then we have, um, Copilot was trying to help out there. Public int X, there we go. Thanks Copilot. So what's the difference between these two things, right? A lot of the time, if you're not used to using records, you haven't seen them, you haven't had an opportunity to play with them, you're used to writing code that looks just like this. And if you were to actually check these out, they look very similar, right? Um, the difference, I guess, is like um, when we instantiate this record, you might be arguing, okay, we can pass in X and Y. We could also put a constructor on on this class up at the top and pass in X and Y, but both of them have properties X and Y that are integers. Well, what I want to look at today is actually doing equality checks with record types, and I'm going to contrast that with classes. And then as I mentioned right in the beginning of this video, I'm going to show you a little trick that we might have to, to think through and how to work around that when we're doing comparisons with record types. So let's start by actually doing um, like checks around my class. So we're going to start by doing class comparisons just so we can uh, set the stage for what we're working with historically and why something like my record might actually be useful um, for a lot of the work you're doing. So when we look at a class, if we wanted to declare my class and I'm going to say first and I'm going to make a new one, um, I'm going to instantiate the X and Y values here. So we'll do X is one, Y is two. Cool. If we wanted to, and we had two of these, right? So Copilot's actually really good. I should have just kept pressing tab and letting it finish the video for me. If we had first and second here, you can see the X and Y values are the same, but we do have two instances, right? We have new and new, as we see on line one and six. If we were to go check if these are equal, um, and I'm going to write out um, wow, this is incredible. Um, thanks, Copilot. <laughs> I feel like it's listening to my microphone, too. Uh, I was going to say we can actually do um, two checks for this. So we can do that, and we can also do, um, we'll do object equals. Just so people can, um, if you're more familiar with the different equality checks that exist in C Sharp, um, this might get you thinking about different things. So we'll do a double equal sign and then we'll do object equals. And then I wanted to also put um, that and then we'll say object. Dot. Okay, so if I go to run this, as we can see, and probably as we expected, we would have false and false. Um, and that's because, and actually maybe some people did not expect that, but these are false in terms of equality because they are two different instances. And what happens a lot of the time historically is that people are checking code like this and they're going, oh man, that's not what actually what I wanted. 
maybe I'd switch this over to a struct. And actually, in this case, um, using a struct might not be a terrible idea just because we have uh, what looks to be a really simple value type. It kind of looks like a point, um, you know, <laughs> two dimensional point with integer values. Maybe a struct is okay here, but if you wanted to stick with classes, Probably at this point, what you would start doing is implementing your own um, equality operators. You'd, ha you'd have to go do uh, a get hash code implementation. And these things are stuff that people mess up all of the time. It's not totally straightforward. Um, there's guidelines and stuff from MSDN on how to do that. But if you're just looking at code online... There's so many copy paste variations and errors that people just don't do it right. And that makes it kind of dangerous because when you want to have something like an equality check, you really want that to be rock solid. Okay, so if that's what we're used to having historically, um, and as I was saying, people would start to go into like, okay, well, maybe I want to actually override the equal operator. Um, and then you have to go override, get hash code. So you're going to have to have these two things implemented in your code to actually start to get what you want. Now, this is where the record type comes in, and I think it's really awesome. Um, I think I've been using C Sharp for uh, probably about half my life now, which is kind of scary to say. And I remember when they announced the record type, I didn't really catch on to why it was valuable. Um, and then when I started realizing in like one use case, I was going through my entire code base and changing a, a bunch of classes to be records. So let's go back up to the top. And instead, let's try looking at what we can do with a record. So I'm going to say my record, um, I guess, yeah, we'll call it third, whatever. We'll call it like first record. Sorry, Copilot, close, but not quite. Um, and then I'm going to do, let's see, second record. Thank you, Copilot. <laughs> I'm going to copy these two lines um, and just make sure I update them properly. So this should say my record. And then we will do the first and second record here. Awesome. Okay, so let me go run this. So this is interesting, right? Because all that I have done is changed the uh, class type to be a record. Um, as we discussed, we still have the same two integer properties, X and Y. Um, they're still one and two respectively for the first and the second class and first and second record. But the equality checks that we have on the record actually come back as true. And this is because the built-in record comparison type is actually doing it more like a value type comparison. Now, if we go back to Visual Studio, let's talk about this for a second. Why is this really valuable for us and what use cases do we have around this? Well, in my opinion, a lot of the time we want to be using records instead of classes for things like data transfer objects, DTOs. And data transfer objects, if you're not totally familiar with what that means, maybe you've heard the you know DTO or data transfer object kind of being thrown around. These are just objects or types that are really intended to just carry data around inside of your application. Um, maybe in something like Entity Framework, you could compare it to something like an entity where it's really just a type that holds data. And a lot of the time when we're trying to do comparisons with these things, we don't actually care if it's the same instance of the of the type that we're looking at, we actually just care, I'm gonna use air quotes here that you can't see, but we actually care that it's like the same shape. Um, and what I mean by shape is like, we have the same values in the same positions, right? So we have one assigned to X in both of these, and then we have two assigned to Y in both of these. So for us, a lot of the time with data transfer objects, we don't care that they're not the same instance. We just care that they look the same. And that's why when you're doing equality checks and you're using DTOs, I really think that records are much better suited for that. But that's it for the most part. I just wanted to show you a very simple uh, difference between these two because again, these types, my class and my record look very, very similar. 
But let's talk about something that's a little bit more complicated because we just had integer types as the properties. What we're going to do on our record is actually implement another property and we're going to call it strings with a Z on the end just to, to spice it up a little bit, but it's a list of strings. We're passing that in as our third property. So let me go ahead and get this example fixed up. All right, so all that I've done here is actually added in another property. So we're inserting this list of strings and you'll notice between the first record and the second record, I actually have the same set of data being passed into the list here. And again, when we're looking at this record type, I mentioned the, the phrase or the word shape, right? These have the same shape, right? We have one and two being passed in, then a list of strings that has first and second, and it's the exact same in both cases. But what's going to happen when I go run this? All right, so maybe this is a little bit surprising for you, maybe not based on what I was showing so far, but now the equality checks are coming back as false. And even though we have what looks like the same two lists, it's coming back as false because the list is a reference type. And when it's trying to do an equality comparison on these lists, it is not doing an equality comparison by value. Conversely, the X and Y properties are integers, and it was doing a comparison by value on those. And as a result, now we have a bit of a, a mishmash of what we might expect to have for an equality check. If instead we pass in the exact same instance of the list into both of these, what do we expect to happen when we go run this now? Well, based on what I was saying before, right before I ran this, when we're doing an equality check and we had the reference type of list of strings, it was doing it by ref and not by value for comparison. Now that we actually have the exact same reference of the list, I'm just going to move this over and you can see that we have the strings passed into both of these record types. It truly is the exact same instance. And when it goes to do a comparison, it is going to come out as true. So unfortunately, I would say that if you're building complex record types and you want that equality comparison to kind of be handled automatically for things like lists um, or other reference types that you're dealing with, then you might have to get back into overriding the get hash code and the equality operator. But for the most part, when you're dealing with record types and all of your properties are actually just by value um, types that can be compared, this will work perfectly for you out of the box. And one more super awesome thing is that we can actually call to string on these records. And instead of you writing a custom to string for your class to be able to output all of the properties, when you go to call to string on these things, they just work perfectly out of the box. Well, I said perfectly, but I mean, it's almost perfect out of the box. So when we look at the two string calls that we have right here, we actually have X and Y called out uh, pretty straightforward, but the actual collection of strings, unfortunately, is not uh, pretty printed for us. It's not printing out, you know, like a, a JSON structure for the entire collection. So again, it starts to break down when you have reference types in there, but when they're value types, it is super clean, super straightforward, and literally no extra work for you to go deal with. You're just declaring things as a record instead of a class. All right, that was just a really basic one for today. So just to recap on what we touched on, the record type is actually a very useful type for you to use in C Sharp when you're trying to work with data transfer objects and you're trying to build, well, you want to avoid building your own equality comparisons. And this is because a lot of the time when we're dealing with data transfer objects, we have really simple types that have other simple types with them, right? So we're gonna have like, uh, in this example we looked at, we had integer properties. So going to write your own equality comparisons and stuff like that, it's just a ton of extra work and very error prone. And then I quickly showed you that you could actually have the two string call work out of the box so you don't have to go write your own of those anymore, super handy. And then the quick little thing that we looked at was that if you're dealing with reference types within your records, that's where your equality checks might start to break down. So you're going to want to pay attention to that in your travels. Okay, so hopefully that was useful. Thanks so much for watching. And because you stayed right to the end, if you watch this video right here, we'll talk about how you can deal with record types in earlier versions of .NET.